All right. Welcome back to the Attack the Rack YouTube channel. Uh, this is the Attack the Rack daily lineup show with myself, Big Mo, and Trent. Today is Wednesday, July 24, 2024. Uh, guys, we have, as I'm looking at our lineup today, there's something that, <laughs> that all three of these topics have in common. Uh, does anything stand out to you guys with our, with our with our lineup today? Or, or 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 no, maybe maybe it's something we should address at the end. But I'm just curious. To be honest, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I, I only remember like one of the questions. Okay, well we'll we, we'll, uh, we'll address it again at the end of the program, and, and see if you guys can come up with a common thread here. Uh, we're gonna start with big news coming out of uh, the world of Netflix. Uh, Connor Stallions, Trent, huge fan of his. You are, I'm sure uh connor stallion's documentary coming to netflix august the 27th uh remember connor stallions is the the uh low level assistant coach from the michigan football team last year who was allegedly caught um i guess how would you put it uh big mo um he cheated <laughs> illegal oh. right you stay out of this for now big mo what what was it was well i don't i mean it was anything nothing was ever proven so really he just he a rogue a rogue um individual trying to trying to move up the ladder um you know uh but, hopefully yeah but i don't want i don't know what you're getting at there that, it was that, like uh, the allegations like allegations deal. yes what were the allegations yes. Yes, allegate, but only allegations. But what were they? They were that he was illegally scouting. I guess you would say. That's probably what the final was, right? Being at some of those games, I don't think they ever proved the sign stealing. Well, um, I, I mean, I think what alleged. he was, what he was the issue was he was going to other, um, other actual Venues. games and watching live games, and scouting, right? I mean, Trent, you're, you've been a, a basketball coach in the high school level. Big Mo, you have, I have. Um, we've gone to plenty of basketball games to scout an opponent, uh, but apparently the NCAA has has a a rule against that. Unless I'm I'm missing something. Um, Trent, you, you maybe have a little bit more knowledge as an Ohio State fan, maybe come from a different angle. Am I miss, is there something I'm missing here with what he did? Well, I thought the big, I thought the big issue that he had was the, uh, it was like the hand signals, so they knew, like what the play calls were based off hand signals or something, but I don't know. Yeah. I guess if you look at it, it's the same way as a coach, basketball coach going to scout a team on their schedule. Right. I would, I would do the same thing. Yes, but if there is a rule, an NCAA, a NCAA rule against it, and he did that, then yes, he was breaking breaking a rule as dumb as that rule may seem to us. Um, I think the craziest thing about the whole thing was his like whole like manifesto book that he made that was like yeah. very military like and yeah. Well, you hope that's like you hope that's the bigger part of the uh, Netflix uh, documentary really. I mean, if yeah. you're a Michigan fan, you hope it's more about what was his overall plan of attack on this whole thing. And yeah. the manifesto is a great example of that. Yeah, and hopefully he doesn't um just like find himself in a bad spot after it's released <laughs> yeah well he's probably going to make some money on it so he's probably going to be in a decent That's spot true. um yeah I, I think the reason though like the ncaa ha does have rules against that is um as big mo is now driving oh yeah hey i'm gonna I, I gotta follow a car real quick here <laughs> <laughs> i think it's awesome though let's go let's do it yeah, first time, not only the first time on the Attack the Rack Daily Lineup Show, the first time on the Attack the Rack YouTube channel, we have a contributor to uh, uh, an Attack the Rack uh, content uh, person. Literally, I, I just, I, I'm just trying to do all I can for Attack the Rack. <laughs> and uh, when you got to try to align three people's schedules, you just got to roll with it, Kurt. Yes, yeah, I, and, and yeah. I mean, we did have almost a, a schedule issue today. I honestly, I think the fact that after tomorrow's show, we will have been doing this for one full month and we haven't had any scheduling issues is pretty impressive. So yeah, that is pretty. Good. 
Uh, but anyway, one last thing about Connor Stallions. Um, I'm certainly super excited for the documentary. Uh, obviously, big Michigan fan. Big Mo, I know you're a big Michigan fan. Trent, yep. on the opposite side of the rivalry, the Ohio State fan, I think that's going to provide some great content for us <laughs> as we get into the college football season. But I do think the reason the NCAA has that rule is because, again, they're so <laughs> – they claim to have – rules set in place to make try to make an even playing field which obviously they don't anyway but because you know some programs maybe can have the money to be able to afford to send a coach you know play pay for a coach's travel expenses ticket to the game to be able to do some advanced scouting where other programs they can't afford that i think that's why they have that rule in place um but for us it's i know, wonder if it would be different if well, I guess, was it on Michigan's dollar, him going to these games, or was it on his dollar? Well, we, we don't know that, I don't think. So hopefully we'll find that there's out. A, there's a lies of the question, Trent. Yeah. Because yeah. that might have a factor in it as well. If, like if it, if it was on his own dollar, then there probably wouldn't be too many like repercussions from it. But if it was Michigan spending that money for him to go to these games, then maybe it could be more of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving on from one scouting scandal to another, we have a new Skygate guy or Spygate guys, Spygate 24 in effect. Uh, Olympics, uh, Olympics women's soccer. Uh, Team Canada is claiming that Team New Zealand is using drones to uh, observe oh. their practice. Now, wow. what do you guys think about that, well, I, Trent? Let's we'll start with you. Is that is that taking scouting too far? Um, should that be illegal? First, well, first of all, should it be illegal? Do you think? I mean, is that a legitimate rule that should be in place that you can't fly drones over your upcoming <laughs> opponent's practice? Well, you can fly drones above a presidential uh, <laughs> rally. Uh, rally, but I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a little extreme for soccer is uh, flying a drone to get some footage. It's probably a, it's probably a good angle that they can watch soccer at at least. So that would probably think it'd be pretty beneficial, but I just picture in my head um, a whole bunch of New Zealand girls sitting in their, in their like team van or something, all looking at the same screen, watching them practice, yeah. <laughs> which would be kind of fun. Um, but I would say, yeah, you probably can't do that in the Olympics or anywhere really. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't know, and, and, and this is just straight ignorance on my part. I didn't know necessarily maybe there's that much X's and O's involved with soccer that you would want to scout an, an opponent to the, an, an opponent to that extent to see what kind of X's, X's and O's. I think the main stuff you would look at is probably how they line up and do corner kicks, how they do free kicks. Okay. Um, those certain things are like certain set plays where I always hated watching soccer and they would be all the way down the field and then they reverse it and just go all the way back to their own goalie. Yeah. But I guess it's for a reason because they like to get set up and it's kind of like hockey in that way where they just stand behind the net, wait for everybody to get ready and then they just move their way up the field. So I think that could be a okay. part of their strategy. All right. Yeah, there's, def there's definitely some uh, X's and O's on the number, the almost like the transition in basketball, I think, Kurt, is how I, I would phrase it, is yeah. how they're attacking each kind of maybe opportunity when they do have the soccer ball um, or when, they have the, when they're have the when they on offense. And even how you play defense. There are different numbers, different people you place in different spaces. So there's definitely – I would I would say that is, that is going a step above and beyond to try to uh, it probably cheat the game. Yeah. Flying a drone. That's <laughs> well, there's all there's nothing like a good Olympic scandal. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Um pretty pretty exciting stuff here. They got new, new beds too. Oh, did they? How about did, are, do they still not have air conditioning? <laughs> I don't know, but I think there's less action between athletes with these new beds. Okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
also a common theme at uh, Olympic Village traditionally from from what we hear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, Big Mo, we'll try to get to this last topic now because uh, obviously you got a um, you got you got somewhere you got. Yeah, I didn't realize I was going to be on the road for this long. I thought it was just down the road here, but. <laughs> Going home. Go ahead. What's the, what's what's the next topic? Okay, so uh, last topic, um, Bill Belichick. Obviously, he did not get a head coaching job going into this season, which is um, kind of shocking, I would say. I mean, did you guys were you guys surprised that he didn't end up getting one of the open jobs? Mm. I think it's. I think it's going to be. I think I. I was not surprised in the fact that I think. Uh, Obviously, with his success, you have to give up some control. Yeah. Um, and uh, most people don't want to give up control unless they have to. Yeah. It'd be interesting to, like, how much success did he have without Tom Brady as well? Well, none, really. <laughs> so, that I think uh, it's tough because it's like he's proven to be a great coach, but he also had Tom Brady – um, but I feel like co NFL coaches are going more towards that younger guy that has that new energy and new style. And I think that kind of played a factor as well. Um, so I, I was surprised that he didn't get a coaching job, but at the same time, it was kind of like, well, he's ran his course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, certainly an incredible resume, six Super Bowls. I guess in that regard, I was a little surprised, but at the same time, if you're a team that's looking for a head coach, you're probably looking for a coach that's going to, you know, try to build over a little bit of a uh, time frame. It, it takes a little while to build something. And, um, you know, who, who knows how long Bill Belichick would actually want to, you know, stick, continue to be a coach. You know, he could retire after even one year and then you're right back where you started. So I could see why these coaches maybe would, want to go with somebody who um, you're, you're confident is going to be there for the long run to try to build your team back up. Uh, but anyway, the, the reason we bring this up is uh, Kyle Shanahan, head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, did offer Bill Belichick an assistant job. I think almost any assistant job that he wanted, he was going to let him take. Um, Big Mo, if you're Bill Belichick, are you, are you taking – an assistant job at this point? I am probably not. I think I think if I'm Bill, there's going to be a team that's projected to, to be in like the top 10 that's going to falter. And that's the job I'm waiting for. Okay. Right? You know, get halfway through the season, there's a team that doesn't, is not uh, living up to their expectations. And all of a sudden, hey, the easiest thing to do midseason is, you know, make a coaching change. Um, and then, you know, can you get, really go wrong with bringing in like a Bill Belichick to try to fix it? Probably not. So I'm waiting. If I'm him, I'm waiting for the uh, next uh, next good team opportunity. Well, I mean, the 49ers certainly are one of those good teams. But are you saying rather than I, than, than try, you know, going through the long haul of the season, let's hold off and maybe hop on a team halfway yeah, through? Hop on a team that's not performing up to their uh, potential. Yeah. Um, I, he, like I said, I, he's still probably someone who wants to be in control if he can be. So I, I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm waiting for that, uh, that team to falter a little bit. Okay. Um, and then, you know, Kyle, Kyle Shanahan did say, you know, uh, he, it was, you know, he was very respectful when he talked about offering Bill Belichick the job, uh, offering Bill Belichick the, the, an assistant job, you know, um, in, in a press conference talking about it. So his intentions weren't, you know, anything malicious or any kind of type of slap in the face of Bill Belichick. But Trent, um, is it still a slap in the face? Is there anything, any other coaching job other than a head coaching job for Bill Belichick to be offered that would would be that wouldn't be a slap in the face? Um, I don't think so. I think he's kind of earned his stripes. And I mean he's got plenty of Super Bowls to back it and I don't know how old he is, but I think it'd be a little hard for him to be in control for so long and then have to take a step back and kind of not be the the main decision maker with a team. Um, I like what Big Mo said about 
just waiting for that next opportunity because it seems like NFL coaches kind of just get tossed around everywhere and mm -hmm. they kind of get a chance at at least I would I don't know three to five teams before their career is over. Yeah. So I think waiting on something that could be um, open in the next year could be pretty good. Like the Cowboys, I bet you they might be open next year. That's exactly. I I think even midseason if they're not uh living up to expectations, what a great chance to bring them in and. Yeah, you know, again, yeah. I think coaching has a little bit to do with all of it, but that's the sometimes the easiest, easiest uh, person to put on the chopping block. So, yeah. yeah, I wonder if he like takes a step back for a year, and then he just realizes like, mm, <laughs> life's not so bad, and, yeah. Yeah. and then just decides to hang it up. Yeah. I don't mind all my free time. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the mentality of I'm uh, him. I would have at that age, like. Why, why do I still want to put myself through that grind? I just want to enjoy life, maybe watch, just enjoy watching football. But at the same time, I think I would also be open to hopping on as just some sort of a special consultant, some maybe lower level assistant, just give my two cents here or there and and maybe ride that wave to a, to a Super Bowl if it's a good enough team. Yeah, and you still want him to be invested in what he's doing as well. You don't want it to be like a half-ass, like, oh, I'm here just to collect a check and that kind of thing. You want him to at least be passionate about it still and yeah. want success for that new team that he's at. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, you know, speaking of speaking of NFL, well, training camps are are in 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 session now. Um we got, uh, I think, the first episode of Hard Knocks with the Chicago Bears coming up maybe next week already. Uh, we've got eight days from now. we got the first NFL preseason game. So, fellas, we are on the verge of NFL. So we will uh, be looking forward to all the NFL topics that we'll be able to talk about. So You're going to have to get two different streaming services, Cody. What do you mean? Well, you have to get HBO for Hard Knocks, and then you have to get Netflix for the uh, Michigan guy. Oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's tough. I yeah, you're right. Because you you're right. You need. I I did talk about my strategy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to for August. I'm gonna have to pay for two. Dang it. <laughs> hey, Kurt. You know you can always stop by and uh, watch the Netflix uh, Connor Stallions uh, docu with me. I got Netflix right now. So. Or we could we could we could get together. I, usually, Hard Knocks airs on what Tuesday nights. Maybe we could make it a thing, like Tuesday nights, hang oh. out, and watch Hard Knocks. There you go. There you go. I like it. Maybe eat some popcorn or something. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Or cute date. Have a couple of cokes. Have a couple of cokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, we'll get we'll get we'll get you out of here, Big Mo. Um, fellas, anything? Anything else? Uh, there, there's so little going on right now, guys. So little going around, uh, going on in the world of sports. But things will be hooking up with NFL training camp, Olympics. I think we've, uh, I think we've pretty much weathered the storm of, uh, of of the slow time of sports, guys. Yeah, yeah I think no, we I would agree. Olympics a little bit. What's that? Yeah, I think I got to keep up with the Olympics a little bit. Yeah. Did you did you have there's a there's a little chart out I saw recently with the Olympic uh, the the athletes the number of athletes from each school uh, oh. college oh did really you see that no yeah um top three I can't remember the top team now uh, it might have been Stanford USC Michigan okay just just throwing that out there Trent yeah no I I, I don't think did I hear I don't think I heard. Oh. I don't. I didn't hear Ohio State, did I? Oh, Let's, I don't know how far down the list they were. Okay. Let's figure out what sports they're playing first. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Olympic archery, athletes, Trent. Olympic archery, athletes. Chess, ping pong. Then I mean, <laughs> actually, it's probably ping pong. Uh, probably ping pong. How about this? Uh, uh, big Mo. Not beer pong. Uh, <laughs> Big Mo, I was gonna wait to bring this up until the podcast on uh, Saturday, but we, and we can talk about it more on Saturday. Uh, but since we're talking about the Olympics, I got hit up again today by another one of your former Fenville players. Said he's enjoying oh, nice. codes. Um, okay. He we were when we started chatting a little bit. Uh, Tony Ortiz, 
Shout out oh, to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he said that, and I didn't know this, that there's break dancing in the Olympics now this year. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> On some cardboard? <laughs> that would be sweet if it was. How could you do it any other way? Or some or some vinyl uh, uh, floor flooring. We're gonna have to get uh, we're gonna have to get producer Dale to uh, fact check that. Um, <laughs> I think he's correct. Information. I believe he's correct. Really, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be a fun Olympics to watch then. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that yeah that will be interesting. I, honestly, if that's if that's really happening, that that excites me. I'm gonna want to watch that for sure. So maybe try maybe there's some Ohio State grads that are that are in on that one, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but all right. Last question now before we get out of here. Do you guys see the common thread now with all three of the topics today in the lineup? I mean, come on. Nope. I mean, football? I don't know. Just, why were we talking about counter stallions? Yeah, I guess coaching. Cheating. Alleged yeah, cheating. Okay. Cheating. Sure. Why do we talk Alleged, about New Zealand soccer? Cheating. Alleged cheating. Yeah. How how many times does Bill Belichick have alleged cheating with yeah. the Flake Gate, his own spy gate, the original spy gate? That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. So <laughs> you know, Kurt, we me and Trent try to stay on the positive mind track. We, <laughs> we're not trying to get into these uh <laughs> Um, conspiracy theorist oh. um, type things. <laughs> I'll go okay, down. Maybe that's just me. How do I speak for Trent? Maybe that's just me. <laughs> just you. Yeah. The <laughs> rabbit hole I go down sometimes is so deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and completely unintentional. I didn't even think about it until actually even a little bit before we hopped on here that the, the connection between all three topics today, completely unintentional. So, but Look I do that. That's something that makes the Attack the Rack YouTube channel so special. Is that is things- all alleged, alleged, all alleged. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Got anything else? Are we done? That nah, we're good. No. Good. All right. We're good. Uh, I'm time to hit the lake. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you guys tomorrow.